This is the Insta360 Go number two. It's like a tiny, small, point of view style camera. And I'm actually working on a project right now where I'm gonna shoot an entire mountain climb in point of view. So I need to test a few things out with this camera to make sure that I'm filming things properly so that I could get the best point of view style footage. So essentially there's a few things that I wanna test out. I'm gonna put the go on my head and see that point of view versus on my chest. And when I'm testing it on my chest, I wanna test the magnet that comes with it, which is actually pretty useful. And then also just a chest harness with like the typical GoPro style of prong mount. Now I also got one of those mounts that's like a big pole that goes off of your helmet. And then also I wanna test the sticky mount for just like a quick tripod so I could like stick it on a rock or stick it on whatever we're walking by and to get a shot that's not from the point of view on me but you can actually see what we're doing from a distance. The idea with the project that I'm working on is to completely immerse yourself in a mountain climb and actually get that first person perspective. And when I was using my GoPro on my last climb, I had so many issues with the footage and I didn't really get to use much of it. So I need to do a few specific tests now with the Go 2. And the reason that the Go 2 would make more sense than a GoPro is that you can reframe and post. So just like the Insta360 ONE X2, you can go in and actually reframe. But there are a few limitations with the Go 2 that I also need to test out, like how to get the footage off because I'm gonna be climbing for three days and with the Go 2, there's no memory card, so I have to pull that footage off. So I wanna shoot a few different samples and really just test out these features to make sure that this camera is gonna work well to get this point of view style. So first, the one thing I wanna test is on the helmet and how it looks with that helmet mount. And I'm gonna be testing everything, doing some mountain biking up here in the hills because it gives me some action to play around with. When I'm climbing, it's gonna be a little bit different, but still there's a lot of movement. There's like ropes and different things. So I just wanna see how my hands work with the point of view perspective and the different things that I'm doing with my hands and also how the view is from the different spots on my body. How's that look? I'm gonna sweat a little bit on this. All right, so let's go through this footage and see what we got. Oh. All right, so looking at that footage, when it's up on my head, I feel like you don't get any perspective of being a point of view. You get that head point of view, but the only thing I think this would be good for is if I wanna see my head swivel, because when I moved my head, you could see that the camera moved a little bit. And I think if I'm climbing and I wanna get that perspective where I'm looking around, then this position might be a good position to use because I could be looking straight ahead or like looking up at what's coming, or I could be like looking down and around, but it won't get as much hand movement. It's not gonna be fully immersed into that point of view. So I can get a clean frame point of view that's mounted on my head and I can get that swivel. I can get the perspective of actually moving. Now let's try the pull that goes out from the helmet to get that reverse shot and see if I could get a like shot reverse shot what I've seen and then seeing my face. And one thing with the Go 2 is when I first got this camera, I accidentally kept putting it in the standard mode, which basically you're not able to reframe. So you have to make sure that you put it in pro mode to be able to get that ability to reframe in post on your phone or on the computer. And to do that, you have to hold and then it turns on and then you click it once and it starts recording. Whereas if you just click it once, it goes into standard mode. So that is one thing that I gotta kinda keep thinking about when I'm filming because I have to get everything shot in pro mode so I have that ability to reframe because that was the issue that I had with my GoPro. 
definitely feel like a unicorn with this thing. with the unicorn pole is actually pretty cool. I mean, that gives the right amount of distance where it doesn't distort too much and you get a really unique perspective like looking at the face. I think this can become super useful in just getting that shot reverse shot. So getting some expression of what's going on because when you're shooting point of view, a lot of times you're always focused on what the person is doing. But I think one of the more important things when it comes to storytelling is also getting reactions, especially of the main subject. And if that's me doing the point of view, I need to get those reverse shots. And it's kind of a cool look to it. So I definitely think I'm gonna be using this kind of shot for the video that I'm shooting. All right, so when it comes to point of view, the last position that I really wanted to test out in this kind of setting was chest and pendant versus you know having the harness on. And last night I actually went out, shot a bunch of footage with the pendant. Uh, so this was all shot with just the magnet and a pendant under my shirt. want to put on the chest harness and do it that way because there was definitely some moments where I hit the go-to and it fell off and if I'm climbing on a mountain and I hit the go-to and then it goes down like a thousand feet off the edge well I just lost not only the camera but all of my footage so I want to have the camera mounted on me as much as possible in those situations and I think there will be times where the pendant makes more sense where I just need quick shots and I'm not worried about the camera dropping into the abyss. Okay, definitely the chest mount gives you more of that point of view perspective because you can see my arms and you can see everything that I'm doing. When I was grabbing like the bag and putting the camera away and grabbing my bike, like all of that is just so visual because it's right from that perspective that feels like you're immersed in the video. From the head, you didn't get that sense, but the head is definitely a clean one. And I think there's time and place for both because you don't always just want arms in the shot at all time, especially when you're telling a story, you might find some areas where you might want a clean perspective. But having the arms just gives you that full immersion and riding the bike, it's so cool. I can imagine when I'm up on the mountain and I'm gonna be doing ropes, rappelling or climbing, you're just gonna get that first person view, that perspective. All right, the last thing that I wanna test is the sticky mount that comes with the go-to. It's kind of a quick little tripod that you can stick on anything. I'm just gonna test it out by sticking it on stuff around here. But a lot of times when I'm on a mountain, I realize there's not really good places to stick tripods. And sometimes if I could just stick something on a rock, it might be a good way to get those shots at a distance from me. So with that sticky mount, it's really easy to use. You just gotta make sure that the sticky part's clean and you can kind of stick it to anything. I tried a few different mounts here, stuck it to trees and rocks and it seemed to stick. The issue is if it was vertical on something and I left it there too long, it slowly started to peel off and then come completely off. Okay, but that shot's pretty cool because it's a stationary shot and you have the ability to reframe so you can create these small pans and movements within the shot and you don't have to do any movement of the camera. So it could just be sitting there, but you could have a reframe from top to bottom. So I'm gonna try to use the sticky mount when I'm out filming. And then I'm also gonna bring a few other little mounts like tripods and things, and we'll see what kind of perspectives I can get when I'm out shooting, trying to really immerse the viewer 
into the video that I'm shooting. All right, so the last thing that I wanna figure out is workflow because this doesn't have a micro SD card slot. It basically has 29 gigabytes of hard drive space and then it's full. So when I'm out climbing for three days, I'm not gonna be able to just rely on the data that's in here. So what I can do is connect via the USB-C to my computer and I could pull the data that way, but I really don't wanna to have to bring a computer up a mountain. I wanna try on my phone, I'm gonna connect the app here, and I wanna see what happens when I pull this footage onto my phone. Ideally, what I want is the Insta360 file. I don't want an MP4 because I want the ability to reframe later, and I need that Insta360 file and bring it into the Insta360 software to be able to get the horizon leveling and the stabilization. So it looks like in the app, I can only download the finished video that I've edited on the app. Okay, I don't wanna export it. No, let's cancel this. All right, so from the home screen where all my footage is, I can download it to my phone. So let's try this. I'm gonna download it first because then I could just keep my phone, clear my phone out, use this as my data storage. And then when I'm back at base camp or home, I can take the footage to my computer and it will just make things a little bit easier. It wouldn't take that long for me to download all the footage onto my phone. You know, I'm gonna be sparing with the way that I shoot this camera and make sure that I'm not shooting too much uh, because I'm gonna be limited. All right, I'm gonna try one more thing because it's not in the app any way to send it, but let me, let me go grab a cable. Okay, cool, figured that out. So when you go into your phone on your finder, you can actually find the folder where the Insta360 files are being stored and then you can just copy that over to the hard drive and then be able to edit it in Insta360 Studio. And the editing is a little limited. You can only go up and down. You can't push around as much, but I think for the majority of the shots, that's gonna be fine. And I'm still gonna have a copy of it in my phone. So if I need to go in and do different styles of movements, I can do that edit in my phone and export it that way. So I think problem solved. I can use my phone as a backup. Now I need to clear my phone so that I have enough space to be able to hold all this footage, but this will be my hard drive and I'll be able to pull everything on it. And using this as a hard drive will give me plenty of storage to be able to capture footage throughout the three days and be able to not run out of space. But next, I highly suggest you check out this video right here. It's the last climbing film that I did and you can see in this video, when I was using my GoPro, how the shots just weren't level and I had a lot of issues with the point of view perspective. All right, I'll see you on the next one.